What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, party people? I know that uh, I hope everybody is doing good. A special location today, you know, top secret. But I, I'm uh, this day. This day couldn't come quick enough, man. This is uh, a special, special day today, man. Um, this is one of those, you know, how you put things into, you know, fruition, and you hope that. Uh, you know, things kind of come together. This is one of those times where I thought I thought about this a long time, and to see that you know this thing come together like this as I bring on my boy on here, and to see where you know I'm not a googly googly person at all, but I do believe in what you think about and what you you know, say out loud will come to fruition. So this is something that I've had in my mind and thinking about doing for, for years now. And it's funny how this is even before Facebook Live was even invented or anything. I thought about certain things like this. And, you know, the fact that, you know, I called my man here last minute who's going to come on and, you know, we talk from time to time, maybe once or twice, you know, uh, a year. And, you know, I, I reached out to him the other day and asked him and told him what I was doing. And, uh, you know, for him to just be like, man, you know, come on, D, I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? And it means a lot to me. Um, and just, it just, you know, further just illustrates like when you think of something and you make it, you know, you make it come possible, people will help you out. And this is it. And I ain't trying to get all googly woogly, but again, it starts with, I tell you, we're writing the schools down. I talk about writing your goals down and everything like that and stuff like this happens. Okay. I ain't going to sit and say, like, this is, you know, old, old dream come true. And old, no, this is just part of the process and stuff that is going to continue to keep happening. And I appreciate my man coming on board um, here. All right. The comments and everything, keep them going. OK, we're going to end this. We're going to talk a little bit. I'm going to bring my man on here. Um, this is, you know, this is uh, something that I believe that will benefit and help everyone that is on here live and that we will we'll see it on the replay. And in the future, okay. So, real quick, I'm gonna just tell you a little bit about my man here, okay. Um, my man here, I'm known. <laughs> he gonna get what up here? What's up, Jesse? You know, he gonna know. You know, I've known this. I've known him since he was a kid. You know, what I'm saying like literally a kid. And um, you know, I ain't gonna you know poo poo him too much. You know, what I'm saying like you know because he's established now and he's a man and family and everything like that. But <laughs> what up, Mark? I remember him when he was you know. Uh, you know, a little youngster, man, running around the fields and everything when I used to be playing. And, you know, he furthered his career and kept playing and became a very good baseball player himself. All right. Play D1 baseball. And I'm gonna let him talk about himself a little bit, but I'm just going to pump him up a little bit, you know, you know, before I put him on here. But, you know, I was happy and proud to say that, you know, I know I knew him when and he played D1 ball, became a coach. And now, you know, which is pretty cool. He coaches at his alma mater right now. You know what I'm saying? Which is, that's, that's pretty cool, right? And, you know, just to see like him grow from a little kid to where he's at now, I'm proud. You know what I'm saying? Of him. So anyway, when I, you know, I asked him, reach out to him, you know, um, this is, uh, this is something that really, you know, he's just helping, he's helping his friend out. All right. And in turn, you know, he's going to help you guys out with the information. Okay. So anyway, without further ado, I want to bring on my boy over here, Danny Perillo, okay, or Dan, Coach Dan Perillo, all right, he's going to come on board, and he is going to, uh, and, and, you know, bear with me, all right, your boy over here, you know, ain't the tech savvy guy, so we come, I'm practicing now, this is the guinea pig, all right, so I'm going to bring him on board here, and we're going to go from here, let me see how this works, okay. See how that's going. Yeah, so oh, okay. oh, okay. Danny, see you guys? Hey, D, how you doing? All right, cool. All right, cool, cool, cool. cool. All right, I guess I got to take the mic because I can't take it. I got to take the mic. Let me see. Can you hear me? Hold on one second. 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 Hold on one second.
Can you hear me now? I got you now. All right, cool, 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 cool. All right, cool, 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 cool. You're good at this either, so I'm, you're leading the way here. All right, cool, cool. cool. All right, cool, cool. All right. So, uh, anyway, I got to work out. So, anyway, Danny, anyway, Danny, if you could, if you could, in a minute, but if you could, a little bit about the building, tell them to a little bit about the building. Um, um, a little bit about just a little bit Yeah, man, I appreciate you having me on, and I know that you're doing this for uh, the kids out there. So, any way I can help, you know, the young guys try to navigate this recruiting process, you know, I'll, I'll try to answer any questions I can. Um, I grew up, you know, you you know, we're you know, the small town of Marlboro, playing in uh, Young's Park, and. We've both been out there, and uh, yeah, growing up in Marlboro, growing up in a small town, um, got to play, you know, summer baseball up in a small area up there. Um, got seen, you know, just by traveling and playing. Um, got to see myself playing. Uh, I played for the Bayside Yankees, and you know, just playing good baseball, and that's how I got seen personally. And um, played D1 baseball at LIU right here in, in Brooklyn and played for four years. And then, you know, my travels, I, I, I wanted to get into coaching. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but getting into coaching was something that was a passion of mine, playing baseball. I wanted to teach it to, to, to players and kids of this age. And um, it took me all across the country. It took me to Georgia. It took me to Chicago. And, you know, um, you know doing the right things and getting getting – getting the right people to see what I'm doing. I got back here at LIU and, um, you know, got to coach my, like you said, got to coach your alma mater. It's pretty cool. And, you know, we've had some success here. We've done some good things here. So, you know, it's uh, everyone's path is different to whatever they're doing. And, and mine's just as different as everyone else's. But, you know, every stop along the way has got me a little bit better and opened my eyes to a little bit more. So, yeah, you know, being back here at LIU, it's, it's been uh, – it's been a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. All right. All right. And, uh, now, for the people who don't know, no, LIU is University of Brooklyn, right? Brooklyn, right? Yeah, LIU is Division One, or in the Northeast Conference. We're right in Brooklyn, New York. I mean, right slap dab, two minutes from the Manhattan Bridge. You know, I got big buildings around us, uh, multi-purpose field, turf field. It's one of the most unique places to play in the country. I mean, it's... You got sirens going off on the side. You got cars driving by. It's, you know, it's this tiny little, little field right in this big, big city. So, um, yeah, unique place to play in the Northeast Conference. Um, you know, we were outside today. It's, you know, 40, it's 40 degrees. You know, we were outside today hitting. You know, in the Northeast, we play in this weather. It's cold. But, you know, we, we tough it out, man. We, we go by the motto of being Brooklyn tough. And, you know, half of that is going outside when it's 40 degrees and swinging the metal bats. Awesome, man. Yeah, awesome, man. I know that, uh, I know that, uh, you know, coming up there, I was just talking yesterday down here in the top of the state of the pole. And they always say, man, you know, you're, 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 no. I said, like, yes, I used to the pole yesterday. I have to get used to playing. I have to get used to playing. I'm like, I gotta deal with it. I gotta deal with it. And yeah. I hated it, especially when it's hanging and everything. Hanging and everything. But, um, and I, real quick, then, and then, hey, guys, But I think I got you with, with your uh, getting there. Um, so we get a lot of video, all right? Video is a good way, especially nowadays. It's so easy to take video. You get it on your iPhone. You take a one-minute video. Um, and we don't need a whole lot. Um, if you're a hitter, I like to see some swings. You know, give me a front and give me a back angle so I can see the ball come off your back. 
Um, give me, you know, six, seven, eight swings. If you're an infielder, position player, I like to see how you move around, I like to see how the ball comes out of your hand. Um, but we get a, a ton of video, and, and if we, we recruit all over the country, so sometimes it's not easy to see guys right away. But an initial video will either put us put you on our map or possibly take you off. So, um, you know, the video is the good initial thing, and, and if we like you, we'll continue to talk to you. We'll let you know. If you're a young player, a 15, 15-year-old, 15 we'll give you stuff to work on, what we're looking for to get better. Um, if you need to improve your arm strength, your speed, um, you know, some a lot of times when the 15-year-old, 16-year-old uh, sends us some, some video, a lot of it is, you know, maturity and needs to get stronger, and, and that'll come. Um, so a lot of times it's uh, – it's the age thing that eventually will come, and we have to decipher if the baseball skills will come there. We, we do a lot of projecting that way. Um, but, yeah, send the video, you know, a personalized email. You know, if I see an email that says just coach, comma, then as a blanket paragraph, I know that's just sent out to 300 other Division One coaches, and I know you're not interested in LIU. You're just interested in being recruited. If you're interested in LIU – I'll see Coach Perillo. Um, I'll see, you know, something about the school that you're interested in coming to Brooklyn and, and you've done some research on us. I know, I know that kid is more interested in LIU than the one that just says a blanket email. So personalizing it, you know, making it to the school. And it takes more time. It takes more effort. I know that. But if you're truly interested, that's, that's what's important to you, then I know that you're interested in us. So that's, that's a great, great way to start for a uh, student athlete. Um, you know, if you're interested in the school, you know, a lot of times when I get asked these questions, find what you're interested in, what kind of school, if you, if you want to stay local, if you're interested in going far away, if you, if you're not, if you're not willing to, to, you know, hit outside in November, cause we're going to play in the springtime. It's going to be cold. If that's not something that you're interested in, don't be sending emails to schools in the North, you know, try to find a school down South. If that's truly what you want. Uh, but find schools that you're interested in and want to um, want a program you want to be a part of. Once you find those schools, send emails, go to camps. You know, there's camps out there. Um, most schools run camps that uh, a prospect camp for high schoolers. Um, if I see a kid coming to our camp each year and he's coming up and I see him progress each year, um, you know, he could turn into a scholarship player for us. So go to camps, get in front of coaches. If, if you're really interested in a school, get in front of those coaches and play. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. You said some things. That's that's some things. So you're saying basically, and I'm, it's my, and I'm, it's my, the um, email, email, you want a more, you want a more, email. that's supposed to be in the school. Yeah, that'll show me your, your level of interest. Um, not to say if I get a blanket email and the player's good, yeah, I'll still recruit him, but I, I don't know his level of interest. If I know you're invested in coming into LIU, you've, you've done the research already, um, you've, you, you know who I am, you know what we've done, what, what majors we have, you know where we are located. Um, so a lot of that stuff will show your level, level of interest as a, as a player. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So, you know, on that, what do you feel about the recruiting service? You know, like my boys, I know the kids, they are, you know, decent money. And I have a decent money. I have a parent that's coming on. What's your honest information? What's your honest information? What's your information? What's your information? You know, recruiting services. Well, recruiting services, um, they do serve a need for some players. Um, not, I, I, personally, I don't know if uh, they're necessary for everybody. Um, if, you're, if you're a good play, baseball player, you will be found and you will go to a school. If you're good, you will get a, you know, hopefully get a scholarship and go to a school. You will be seen. There's, there's not many more diamonds in a rough you know, that are not seen and not in front of people. Uh, we have eyes and ears all across the country that tell us about players. So there's not a lot of players that get overlooked anymore. Um, there's some late bloomers and things along that, those lines. Um, but my best advice is go play. I want to see guys go play. I want to see guys, you know, playing games. I want to see, you know, I, I'll get a recruiting service to get me a name, but I'm still going to go watch him play. They're not going to get a scholarship off a of recruiting service. 
Um, I'm still, they might give me a lead on a guy here and there. Um, and I do have contacts through recruiting services that, you know, will reach out to me and people I know, but I still want to see them from my own eyes. I want to see them play. Um, but just as much a recruiting service is a summer coach that can reach out to me and do the same thing. Um, those summer coaches um, that we know and trust can do just as much as a recruiting service. So um, recruits, they're not for everyone. They're, you know, they cost a lot of money. I get that. They're, they're, there's other ways to get seen and get recruited. And um, having the people around you that you know and trust is just as important. And those are your summer coaches, your high school coaches, uh, helping you make that decision. All right. Um... That honestly depends on the summer coach. Uh, high school coaches get to uh, tell us more about um, competition and how they interact with, with competition. Because at high school, you're playing games, you're playing for a state championship, you're playing with stuff on the line. A lot of summer uh, teams are playing in these uh, showcase games where there's really nothing on the line. Um, we get to see skill sets over the summer. We get to see how you can run and throw. But uh, each you know, a high school uh, coach would, would probably be able to tell me something different than a summer coach. Um, I like to see a kid compete. Sometimes I'll go watch a kid play. If he plays football, I'll go watch him play football and see how he competes and interacts with teammates. I want to see how he – is he a good teammate? Is he at the end of the bench sulking after a bad play? Um, during the summer, it's a lot less of that because it's more of a showcase. Now, if there's a lot of competition in the summer, then, then perfect. Then I can do that. But um, the competition is something I really like to uh, see because when you get to the next level – it's tons of competition. I mean, that's our whole – everything's around – you're, you're competing for a position, you're competing for playing time. Everything's a competition. So I like to see how a kid reacts to different competitions. That's awesome. Man. That's awesome, man. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm learning something right now. So, uh, if you could just kind of – you could just kind of – you know, in your 11.7, breaking it down. Are you are you, are you, are you um, giving more, I'm giving more, you know, looks for the end, you know, look for the end, or you know, give up your, you know, I ain't getting all your business, you know, pretty cool, you know, pretty cool, you can explain, explain, you your scholarship, you your scholarship, you know, can you explain, can you explain, you know, can you and so much, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. 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 the, um, so, like you said, 11.7 scholarships, that's, you know, if you take a full scholarship of the university, 11.7, we get to distribute out to 27 players. Uh, we're allowed to carry 35 guys, so that's eight walk-on guys, 27 scholarship guys. Um, if you break that down, that's less than a half a scholarship per guy if you break it up ev evenly. And usually we don't. Um, you know, baseball, unfortunately, is this sport where – a lot of you have to pay you know, a pretty decent amount um, of your own money because there's not that much scholarship. That's why academics is so important that you know you get to supplement that and stack your academics with your athletics. So it makes the you know paying the the, the rest of the money easier the more the better of a student you are. Um, basically we have to distribute that money based on a few things. One thing is need. What do we need? What's graduating? All right. You might be a great player, but if we have, you might be a great shortstop, but if we have a freshman, sophomore, uh, and a junior shortstop, there's really not a need for you right now. All right. And what we have to do is based on our needs, what's, what, what do we have leaving our program? And we have to put our money to that. So, um, a lot of it's based on need uh, for the next year or two. Um, it's also based on how quickly you can impact us, um, how, how quickly we think you're going to step on the field, um, how quickly that you're going to get significant at-bats or innings on the mound will also dictate 
you know, initially how much we can invest in you because that's what we're doing. We're, we're investing money into you as a player, into our program. Um, and the other thing is if you're not an impact guy, then we project you. Well, you, you're, you're a guy who's uh, maybe a late bloomer in our eyes, um, someone who we think once we get our hands on you, we get you in our weight room, get you in our strength program, you can eventually be an impact guy sophomore, junior year. Um, and that's the other way uh, to, to put money in. But uh, there's no scientific formula of, you know, you put so much money in a pitcher, so much money in a shortstop. There's no formula that I think works um, other than, you know, the strength of your your team should be up the middle. So you always want catchers, shortstops, center field, and pitchers. Um, and then you build around that. So that's kind of the direction that we've been going. So it's kind of worked out for us. Um, but, you know, when you distribute 11.7 seven guys you have to figure where's my needs and how quickly can i get them into my program and make an impact so basically, so basically the higher level the higher level the more you're going to give up money yeah and it doesn't if you're if you're you can um, i was um, um, um on an academic <laughs> I was told that you was told that it, 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 it together. They go in together. They go in together. can be or something like that. Something can be, um, you know, allotted to that kid that he's going to be fine, fine athletic and be 50% of the, uh, of the academic. Is that about the, about the academic, the academics can be stacked. Um, I didn't get your whole question, but the academics can be stacked um, for the player's benefit. Um, and there's a couple different criteria that they can, they have to hit for that to be able to count. Um, top 10% of your class. Um, there's a few other ones in there that they have to hit, but we, as a, as a program, when I say the 11.7, we have to give 25%. There's a minimum for Division One baseball. We have to give 25% of the athletic scholarship um, to have be able to stack onto your athletic, your academic. Cool, cool. So, cool, cool. so people having trouble here. The only thing is if I put the only thing is if I put I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I talk, so I talk, so y'all got a lot of my boys over there. I'm talking junk over there. I'm talking junk over there. And, 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 but don't fucking junk. I don't know. 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 I uh, all right, so, so a couple things. I have this uh, Canadian uh, 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 listener on here. So, uh, so what is what is what can I do uh, to, to uh, get noted? To, you know, to Canada. What was the last part of that, D? Canadian, uh, Canadian Canada. You know what? The every school is a little different when it comes to international uh, students. Um, it's not that much different in terms of recruiting. Um, there's some. Um, sometimes you get a little bit extra academic money if you're an international student, um, just as a a, uh, a scholarship. But you know. There's a lot of good Canadian teams. I know the Ontario Blue Jays. There's a lot of good teams that come to America and play, and, and there's a lot of good events where we see those international students. Um, but, you know, just, you know, same thing. I get emails from international students. Um, I don't think the recruiting process is any different other than we won't be able to see you as often. And, you know, we would probably have to take a chance on seeing you once, seeing some video, and, and um, you know, trying to make a decision based off that, but you know, as a as an international student, you're probably it's probably a little tougher for you uh, 
than the American student who's in this country and has a little bit more access and availability to play in front of us. Um, so I, if I was that international student, I would send more emails and send, you know, e um, you know, try to see camps. I would try to make a, a trip to the States to schools that I'm very interested in and, and try to go to their camps and get in front of them. Uh, this way you're, you're able to see the school and talk to the coach in the same visit. Nice, man. The guys, I don't think they're going to be able to ask you some questions. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. So, he, uh, he was going to ask, what is the average out-of-pocket experience for a kid at the college? The out of the average out of pocket LIU LIU is a private institution. It costs uh, about fifty two thousand for the year, uh, anywhere from fifty to fifty two thousand for the year for um, a general. You know that's how much tuition is tuition, room and board. Um, for a, a stu a baseball player here here at LIU, the average is anywhere from. Ten to twenty thousand, uh, where, where where players take loans out and they have different um, uh, different loans to take out, or uh, some have some grants that they that they have uh, to help cover that. But you know, anywhere some some play a little bit more twenty to some some are down to about five thousand. So anywhere in between there, students will pay. Cool, cool. Um, now. <laughs> I think the audio was but I, I got to do what you did, man. I appreciate you. Um, so I'm going to kick it off. Thank you for coming on, dude. It's been so happy to everybody. And to everybody. And so I'm going to see you. I'm going to talk to you. And thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for having me, D man. Anything, any kind of questions I can I can answer? I mean, I know you do an outstanding job out there with your kids, and, and and just by talking to you, you know, our phone calls. I know you, you know, you know, it's important to find a coach, a summer coach, a a, a mentor that you trust in this recruiting process because it's hard. It's it's not easy. There's a lot of tough decisions. You're making a huge commitment for four years. A financial commitment, you know, your future, future in, in terms of playing and going to the right place. You got to surround, surround yourself with people you trust and people that have your best interests. And, you know, my hat's off to you with, with this and, and helping your guys because I know you care. And just by watching the videos, you do an outstanding job with, you know, helping your guys. So any way I can help, let me know, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate the question I got, and I'll be here, but the coach is out. He said average. <laughs> Average cost? Yeah, he said average cost. He asked more. He wants to ask in-depth questions. Gotcha. Gotcha. The, um, so, you know, if a guy's on 50% scholarship of, uh, of 52000 he's getting um, $28,000, you know, paid for. He's, you know, if he doesn't have any academic money, he's got to pay for the rest. You know, he's got to take a loan out. If, you know, you come from a wealthy family, you, you pay it that way. Um, if you if you get 50% scholarship and you get another $15,000 for academics, then you just have to pay for the rest. So there's some guys with a really good, really high academics that, you know, with their baseball scholarship and that academic scholarship, they only end up paying, a you know, a couple thousand dollars. There's some guys with lower academic money who have to pay a little bit more to make up for that difference um so you know the average you know i don't everybody's different there's no you know it's not uh, a, such a set number because of because everyone's situation with your athletic package and your academic package of how much they're paying out of pocket but i can tell you this nobody nobody's on a full ride you know there's no there's no full rides in baseball at, at where we're at you know, unless you're a. Are there? Are there what's that? Are there, are there technical school right now? I don't know of many, man. I don't know of a lot. I I, I don't want to say in, in talking absolutes, but I don't know of many. 
there's not a lot of if if there's if there's twenty out there in the country, I'd be I'd be surprised. And there's just so little academic uh, athletic money for baseball, and we have to spread it out. Um, it, it's it's not easy to give all one scholarship, one whole scholarship to one player. Um, but you know, there's there's different things you can do with packaging, academic money, and helping guys out. Um, but you know. Mo I know all the guys on our team are paying at least a little bit because of how uh, how the a a athletic money is structured. Right. Now, my question is, but I've been hearing something, and I've been hearing, I don't be, you know, I don't hear, I, I don't hear, I don't hear yeah. about a thing, you know what I'm saying? It is, it is what it is. Yeah. Let me yep. this. So, yep. um, um, this is a uh, he asked, what would a transfer student that wants to play college football after graduation? The reason was he to get into the services, but he didn't. Now he can't play. What, what do you think he should do? So did he play at all at the next level, or is he, he hasn't played at all? I don't think he played. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Um, so he, I mean, he, if he didn't play at any other college, he can, you know, apply for uh, a lot of those guys go to junior college route and play for one, at least one year, um, most likely two. Now we do a lot of junior college recruiting because that, that is a really good option for guys. Cause you know, like I said, 52, that's a lot of money. So, you know, I get that the financial part is expensive and junior college is a pretty good route. You know, you can get better. You can mature there. You can develop some skills. You can get drafted from there. Um, the junior college route is a good option, and we do a lot of recruiting from the junior colleges. So, you know, when guys ask me those type of questions, I do recommend some junior colleges. That's dope. I agree. I'm right there with that. Right there with that. Yep. No, it, it, it makes sense. I'm up. All right. I think That's it. That's all the questions, Dan. So I'm going to wipe you all. Let's go. All right. Thank you, brother. Talk to you. All right, man. Take care.